Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everybody is doing fine. I have got uh, multiple requests on uh, CDC reconvergence uh, lecture. So here I am uh, trying to create a, uh, a small um, uh, discussion on uh, reconvergence uh, topic. All right. So first, let's understand, right? So where do we need uh, convergence or reconvergence of that scenario? So we have uh, two clock domains. It can be, you know, uh, multiple clock domains, uh, n clock domains, for example, x, y, z, and whatever it is. For sake of uh, discussion and simplicity, I'm assuming here uh, two clock domains, okay? So here we have uh, some, uh, some logic gate, right? Uh, combinator logic is driving a signal passing through a flop and uh, that is passing and it's supposed to go to a, another flop which is on second clock domain let's say clock p all right so let's complete a very simple uh, diagram uh, block diagram here for the circuit um, as you can see here that i have purposefully drawn uh, this picture to show that we have um, a buffer here on on one path and we have two back-to-back -back inverters on another path, okay? And they are, you know, the signals are going to a AND gate uh, and then uh, driving the uh, flop uh, D input in clock domain B, okay? Now, as you can see here, uh, we have a problem. We have a problem of clock domain crossings, okay? We have signals going from clock A to clock B. Now, this looks like a simple problem, but uh, th there is some seriousness about, about this. So let's uh, try what typically people do. Oh yeah, I have uh, this signal crossing from uh, clock A to clock B and this signal crossing from clock A to clock B. And, and let's just put a synchronizing cell here, okay? Uh, but before uh, going to put syn synchronizing cell, so the point here is that this path or this signal, same signal is diverging. So we are getting two paths. It can have n paths, okay? In, in complex, uh, you know, integration uh, SOCs, you know, one signal is going through chain of buffers or inverters, okay? Uh, to multiple paths. So signal is diverging. We call it signal is diverging at this point. And where the same signal, all the paths, they are coming uh, to join, we call them, they are converging. So in this case, they are converging here. All right. So as I was speaking earlier, that people typically put two back-to-back -back inverters. Or uh, I call it a sync cell because sometimes depending upon the technology, uh, you may have uh, two back-to-back uh, -back cells, you know, here too, uh, you may have um, two or you may have actually three cells here as well, okay? So really it depends. So let's simply city call it sync cell, but this solution has a problem, okay? Uh, this is not the, the right way of, of doing it, okay? Now why I say that this is not the right way of doing it. So let's let's just uh, see, uh, right. The delay on this path, okay? Now we have only one buffer here on this path. You may have some delay number, let's say T1 uh, uh, delay from uh, Q, Q to D input, okay? So we have T1 delay. Similarly, uh, from Q input, sorry, Q output of the flop in clock domain A, we go via these two inverters and the second path, it will have a different delay. Do you agree with me? So let's call them T1 and T2. 
and these delays, right, uh, you don't know. Um, I mean, unless uh, your layout is done and uh, you get the final timing um, uh, to really see the propagational delay on these, these paths. Okay. Nevertheless, um, let's just assume T1 and T2. So they won't be equal, okay, in reality. Um, one would be bigger or smaller than the other one. So as you can see here, this signal, the same signal, Q output, is following this path, first path, and coming to the AND gate input at T1 time. And the same output, Q, following second path, and coming to the AND gate, second input, at T2 time. So we, we would have a glitch, okay? And then, uh, you know, the value, you might say, oh yeah, I have, you know, I'm sending the zero or one, well, what may happen that the zero or one receives uh, at uh, I one, it may be the wrong value. And here you would latch the wrong value in this uh, flop. So we have, we have a problem. Now you understand, uh, we have a problem here, okay? So your value, it, it may be like, let's say uh, at, T1 time you have a zero value and by the time Q is changed and you know T2 is uh, smaller you may have one or larger so you may you may get a scenario where you get zero or one however here it is all zero okay and this one I'm talking about the next cycle value not really value because you can argue or can say that oh yeah I, we have zero right and this buffer and we get zero here right and then these two inverters we get zero here but think about the next cycle or many other cycles right um, the delay may be maybe different uh, right uh, and and you would latch um, because these are metastable scenarios right so when this flop will give you the correct value. I mean, it's a separate discussion, right? Um, uh, sync cell will produce, right, a stable value and what value. So nevertheless, momentarily, uh, you have zero here and then you have one here. And this is a combinatorial logic, so it will toggle, right? It will, uh, you won't get the correct value or this value you might get, you know, same value, you might get different, but you cannot rely 100% uh, the value what is on the, the input. So we have, we have a bigger issue. How do we resolve this? Okay, so now we understood uh, what is convergence, the, uh, right? Uh, and uh, what is the divergence and, and uh, convergence? So together, in conceptually, it's called reconvergence. I mean, don't worry about the uh, terms, but the important is to understand the concept here. You can put it in another uh, way of visualizing it as if there are two paths, right, from of the same output signal. Uh, they are diverging, and then they are converging. Here I'm showing only two paths, but they can have multiple paths, hundreds of uh, such paths, which are uh, diverging from one output and converging to uh, another input in uh, another clock domain. Okay. A very simple concept of reconvergence. Now let's tackle, uh, this is definitely not the good way of tackling this scenario where we use two sync cells. Typically people do this mistake, but that's, uh, that's not correct. Um, now, what else we can do? Instead of using two sync cells, let's combine these two um, and diverging signal and uh, combine these or converse them before uh, we pass the uh, uh, output of uh, converging wires to the sync cell input. Okay. So when you do that, that will toggle, okay, that will toggle, uh, that will toggle and you may have different delays, but then, uh, right, uh, you will also have, uh, you know, uh, analysis from the design side. So it's not really like 100%, this is accurate, uh, 
but you have to see that within one cycle or within three cycles or within four cycles, whatever is the uh, multi-cycle constraints you have put between these two uh, clock, uh, th these two domains, right? These signals should arrive within that. Okay. Now, th these signals, you know, arrive a little bit earlier, a little bit later. But we're going to be latching, let's say I put a multi-cycle constraint of, uh, let's say, three clock cycles, okay? So I'm going to be latching this value in this D, uh, uh, at this D input in this clock B, after three clock cycles. So that's kind of uh, assumption, right? And this synchronizer would take care of providing me just one signal with a good value, okay? So th th this, is, this uh, is tricky scenario. So it's not only the physical implementation, but also from a design uh, perspective, you have to think about it. Now here, I mean, typically tool will give you, oh yeah, you have a combinator logic before or at the input of the uh, uh, sync cell. And that's a violation of the CDC in, in many um, CDC tools, let's say zero in by Questa or uh, VC formal, uh, VC um, from Synopsys. But uh, that way, I mean, in this scenario, right, you know that, you know, the clock relationships. So you need to also know the clock relationships. If let's say you call it purely a, a, a asynchronous clock, right, then you would have uh, some other mechanism uh, to deal with this scenario. Let's say you generate uh, some sort of a enable signal, right, uh, before you latch this value. So let's say you generate a some sort of an enable wire, right? And then based on the enable wire, um, you you just uh, you know pass an enable signal, put a synchronizer cell uh, here, and then put a flop here. And when the enable is high, then only you latch this value or you trust uh, this value, which is at the input. Okay. So that's that's a that's a very simple. Uh, a small discussion on the reconvergence topic. But think about it um, that, you know, uh, you, you got to have the idea that, that these two are coming at the different times. This is T1 and this is T2. Now, what do we do with that? Okay, this is going to be uh, having a glitch. That's fine. But typically, these scenarios, right, uh, are to be handled in the microarchitecture. How do we deal uh, these kind of scenarios, or um, do we have another um, another control wire, right, which says that when to latch the value at the D input in clock B, okay. or some sort of a qualifier signal or qualifying signal uh, which acts as as an enable. Right. All right, guys. Uh, thank you. Uh, I hope you have uh, um, enjoyed this lecture. Uh, leave your comments uh, and thank you very much for uh, watching.